Some time ago I made a video about filming dryers where I compared three units and I check how they were working for me until that time. Now I have a new one, it's the Fix Dry NT2 and I want to share with you my point of view after using it for a few weeks. This dryer is a pretty slick looking dryer with some intuitive controls and a nice screen that is very easy to read even in the when there is light. There are a few things that I'm liking quite a lot from this dryer. Number one is the fact that in the front you have a table with the values or the temperatures that you can use or is recommended to use to dry each one of the different filament types that you can use in here. The reason why this table exists in here is because you manually have to change the value on the dryer depending on what you're going to have there. It's not like the Sunlu uh, that, I that I reviewed before where you had like presets per name, like if it was PLA they will have a value associated with that name already. Here the dryer doesn't have any kind of idea if it's PLA or TPU or ABS that you're going to dry but you have to manually change that value on the screen. Number two is that the screen that the device has is pretty easy to read, it's pretty clear. It's, it's, I'm not sure what technology is behind this, but this, the screen on the Sunlu that I show on my other video, if you want, go and check it because it's uh, a good comparison between the other three devices. But the screen there is more, more, much more difficult to see, like especially if you have light or something, it's like diluted with the light. The screen on the fixed drive is pretty, pretty good. Number three is that the controls in the front are very responsive. They are touch, or they call it touch controls, but they are, you know, like what we were used to is this is not a touch screen, it's just a capacitive touch on this big front side of the, of the filament dryer but they are very responsive so there is nothing bad with the controls i actually find it very nice to to play with this device number four is that this device is not only a dryer but it's also a spool holder inside you find two rods using bearings which allows the rod to spin freely when you are printing this is excellent because you can warm up you can keep drying your filament when you are printing and if you're using filaments that are very sensitive to the humidity this is something that is very good the fact that the rods inside are using bearings make it very easy for the filament to roll which is similar to what the Sunlu is doing it also has these kind of rods but it's different to what the ABOS is doing where the ABOS have to rotate on just a plastic which is something that I didn't like because it creates a lot of friction and then it's um, more difficult to drag that filament out of the ABOS box than from the Sunlu or from the fixed dry in this case. Number five is the fact that the device seems to be doing its job drying a filament pretty well. To check this, I started both the NT2 and the Sunlu at the same time using TPU rolls that I had in my shelf for a while. So they should be somehow, you know, both humid in the same way. And when I started both devices, they were on uh, a high level of humidity, 50, 40 or something like that. Just after an hour, when I went to check again, the fixed dry seemed to have uh, lower that value quite a lot while the Sunlu was still kind of working on getting there. This actually called so much my attention that I wanted to check with a third device or something different than the than the, the own device to check the humidity and this kind of things because I didn't really believe it but when I removed the TPU and I put up an, another device that I have at home which I'm, I'm not gonna say that is super accurate but still it's the same device that I used to compare the two uh, dryers. I saw the humidity value very, very low, like on the 10 or the 13 percentage value, which is quite amazing, especially thinking that the filament was there just a couple of hours, not, not as we normally think that you have to dry it for six, seven, eight hours or something like that. So for me, this was uh, pretty cool to see. 
If you compare that with the Sun Lu, which was still working, uh, and I got something around 30% of value, you know, on the same amount of time. So you see here a difference. I also, I read on one of the comments on my other videos, someone saying that the Sun Lu doesn't go lower than 30, 35 ish or something like that, unless you keep the lid a bit open with, for example, like a piece of filament or something like that. So the air, the humid air can leave the device. Again, the fixed dry MT2 seems to be doing a much better work here with the fan that it has inside and the way that it's moving the air. Remember that the Sunlu doesn't have a fan, which means that the heat just comes from the bottom, that is uh, the, the heating part of this. The fixed dry MT2 has some fans pro plus some uh, warming elements inside, which seems to be spreading the heat very equally around the whole filament and well doing a very good job actually in that sense now let's talk about what i'm not liking that much i'm not saying that i'm hating these things but you know you have to see goods and bad of the device number one i was mentioning before that i like the fact that you have the tables with the values of the recommended temperatures to dry your filament in the front that's pretty cool but the fact that you don't have like a preset like on the sunlu which is much easier just to change from TPU to PLA to uh, ABS directly on the screen, you know, it's a little bit of a downside. The ABOS, it's actually kind of like weird in that sense because it has this uh, knob where you go from one name to the other, PLA to TPU to ABS, which is very easy as a user to just choose what you want but you have no idea what temperature you are actually using or what temperature the device is trying to reach. In this case, I would say that the Sunlu is the best in my opinion because it, you change from one profile to the other using the, the keys there and you change and you see the name. You can act, also change the temperature, but it's easy to go from name to name. On the fixed dry, you change the temperature very easily, but you don't know you don't have a relationship directly on the screen. What, what are you changing to? Number two, and this one, it's kind of like a big deal for me. It's the angle which the filament is using to leave the, the box. In the fixed draw, it's like very horizontal. The filament is going on the side and you have only one on the back and one in the front. You don't have all the options. This is something that the ABOS does very nicely because they have like four different options up to the sides and, uh, and the same on the, on the back side. The Sunlu has an angle that is more convenient for many kind of different types of printer. But in my case, my printer is high and to leave the filament box on the side completely horizontal, it's gonna make a, a, a tough curve to go up to the, to the printer. If you see, I even modify my Sunlu to have a better angle from the top for the filament to, to, to leave the box. And that's something that I find it complicated in this one. That's gonna create some friction and it's not gonna allow the, the filament spool to roll freely as I want. Number three, and this one was kind of like the deal breaker here, is that the dryer box is very sleek, very nice, very slim. But also that makes it the space that you have to have a filament roll inside, it's very tight. Using any of my regular filaments of one kilos or 0.8 kilo, it fits fine if um, I'm not using anything else. But for example, my car box spools, they tend to damage if you, if you drop them or even from factory, they sometimes they come with a little bit of a bump or something. So they won't roll very nicely unless I put these plastic things around, which is making the, the rolling of the filament much easier. If I use these kind of things, the filament spool doesn't fit in the dryer. And that's a big problem for me. I have many of these car box uh, filament and if I want them to 
freely roll in the dryer while still printing, it's not gonna work. So, unless you have all your filament rolls in plastic and they are nicely taken care of, you might have problems using this filament dryer. And of course, if you have a little bit of a bigger filament spools, like three kilos or five kilos, forget about it, they won't fit here. But let's say that that was never the, the intention, right? Like if you are using the three, five kilos, you will be looking for a much bigger, even a double side spool holder or filament dryer. But still, I think that was a mistake in here. Like they didn't leave enough space for for error, basically. The ABOS and the Sunlu, both of them, I can fit it with the plastic ring around the, the spool without any problem. But in here, unfortunately, it's not fitting. In summary, I will say like this. I like very much how this device looks. I like it, I like to use it. I think that it's doing a superb job drying the filament. But the fact that I can't fit the card box spools in here with the plastic green around, it's, it's a big problem for me. If you are a person that is only using plastic filament rolls from the, your preferred manufacturer, then go ahead. This one, it's a, it's a very good uh, dryer. But if you are like me, that you have a bunch of different manufacturers and you get rolls from here and from there, it might be a problem to use the dryer at the same time that you are feeding your printer to print with a warm and dry plastic. You might be using the filament dryer just to dry and not to print and dry at the same time. And for that, it's gonna do a very, very good job. But again, if you're thinking to have it there with the plastic thing so it can roll, it's gonna be a problem. If you wanna see more in depth of the other filament dryers that I have, please go and check my other video. Otherwise, I'm just gonna thank you for watching this video and hope to see you soon. Thank you for watching.